Are you looking for the best fertilizer for your hibiscus plant? What should be the ideal NPK ratio for both organic and chemical fertilizers used specifically in hibiscus? What fertilizers work well and why? When and how to add those? How to get brighter, bigger and more number of flowers in your plant? What do's and don'ts you need to follow while fertilizing your hibiscus plant? All these things that no one told you before will be covered in this episode. It will be very informative for you if you are a hibiscus lover. There will be lots of important details regarding this in today's episode. So please watch the entire episode without skipping it. Let's begin. Welcome back to my channel Grow and More. In today's episode, we'll learn all about fertilizing your hibiscus plant. Just like any other flowering plant, hibiscus also needs a large number of nutrition in the growing stage. The hibiscus fertilizer can either slow release like organic fertilizers or can be water soluble like inorganic or chemical fertilizers. I will be talking about both of these two types which I use in my hibiscus plant. These fertilizers not only help the plant to produce more branching and beautiful flowers but also good for its overall health. But first, let's start with the type of nutrition hibiscus plant need. Ideally, they require a fertilizer with a medium amount of nitrogen or N, low amount of phosphorus or P, and relatively higher amount of potassium or K. We'll be talking all these things in terms of these three values, that is the ratio of NPK. So for example, the all-purpose balanced fertilizer 1990-19 or 2020-20 means the first number is for N, the second one is for P, and the third is for K. And the numbers mean the percentage of that fertilizer in weight which will be available to your plant when you use them. So in case of hibiscus, we need something which has medium N, the first number in the NPK ratio, the low P, the second number, and high K, the third number. The best chemical fertilizer for hibiscus is considered as in a 17524 ratio, that is NPK, 17 is to 5 is to 24, 17% nitrogen, 5% phosphorus and 24% potassium. So it has a very low in phosphorus and the nitrogen is about 3 times and potassium is about 5 times of that phosphorus. It's very difficult to find the readily available fertilizer in this ratio. So it's better to make it by mixing some of the commonly used fertilizers. But again, it is very hard to get the right combination of materials in an exact 17524 ratio using those. So, I come up with the next best thing that you can easily make using only 3 available fertilizers. I will be using a combination of ammonium sulphate which has about 21% nitrogen. Second thing I will be using monoammonium phosphate or MAP which has NPK of 12 is to 61 is to 00. And the third one I will be using potassium sulphate with NPK 0050. All these fertilizers are readily available in any garden store or even online. You could use alternatively urea, DAP and murate of potash which are the most common fertilizers available in market. But the problem with urea based fertilizer is that it is not so good for your soil and also if you mix these things they will react soon and you can store them for a longer period of time. That's why I prefer to use ammonium based forces and also those fertilizers which are in sulphate salt is good for maintaining the proper pH of your soil. Also remember that we can just mix any two fertilizers, they have to be compatible, otherwise they will react among them and quickly produce a compound or different salt which will not be available to your plant. For example, you can mix magnesium sulphate or epsom salt with calcium nitrate, then neither magnesium or calcium will be available to your plant. You can check the compatibility of different fertilizers in internet. All these three fertilizers which I use are well compatible with each other and you can store this mix for a longer period of time, more than 6 months or so. The individual amounts which I follow are shown in this list. Ammonium sulphate 8 gram, monoammonium phosphate or 126100, 1 gram, and potassium sulphate that is 0050, 6 gram. Total 15 gram of this mixture has NPK of about 12 is to 4 is to 20. That is nitrogen is 3 times of phosphorus and potassium is 5 times of phosphorus which we know is best for hibiscus. Nitrogen is little low in compared to that found in 17 is to 5 is to 24 fertilizer 
but it is actually good for plants. Little low nitrogen will minimize the risk of fertilizer burning in your plant. If you use this mixture of urea, DAP and muriate of potash, then you need to adjust this table accordingly. You can't just blindly use these values as urea or DAP or muriate of potash have defined NPK ratios than these three fertilizers. For example, urea has 46% nitrogen. So for measuring I am using here a spoon. A full spoon fertilizer means roughly 5 gram. But note that this is a rough or approximate estimation. For exact result, you need to use weight machine. So 8 spoon ammonium sulfate that is 40 gram. One spoon 126100 that is monoammonium phosphate is 5 gram and six spoon potassium sulfate that is 0050 is 30 gram. So total 75 gram fertilizer I made but the NPK ratio is same 12 is to 4 is to 20. I use one spoon that is 5 gram fertilizer once in two weeks for each potted plant. Before applying the fertilizer, make sure your soil or potting mix is not too dry. It should be little moist like this. If it's dry, you need to water it before applying the fertilizer. Add the fertilizer away from the stem of the plant. And water the medium thoroughly. You can store the rest of the amount in an airtight bag or box for later use. Now, if you wish to go organic way, the best thing for your plant is to use neem cake. It has almost 2-5% to nitrogen, very low phosphorus, about maximum 1% and about 2% potassium. There are one more advantage of using neem cake. It will repel the pest away to some extent. Along with this, you can add seaweed, granular or in liquid form. It is a very great source of organic potassium. You can also add some bone meal or bone dust or vermicompost along with this. Add about 4 spoon full of neem cake, 1 spoon bone dust, 2 spoon vermicompost and 1 spoon seaweed. Out of this total 8 spoon, you can use 2 spoon of this mix once in every 2 weeks. What I recommend is that to use chemical and this organic mix alternatively. That is if you use first the chemical one, wait for 2 weeks, then use the organic mix, then again after 2 weeks you can use the chemical fertilizer. One important thing to note that in summer use only this organic mix, no chemical fertilizer during summer. And also, you should avoid using organic fertilizer during rainy season because they might increase the chance of fungal attack during that time. I should also mention that this is the dose for mature plant. But when the plant is very small and very young, you can apply this fertilizer in a much lower amount, say about one fourth of the recommended dose. Apart from all this, you should also give Epsom salt or magnesium sulfate 2 gram per liter as foliar spray once in a month. Magnesium will help the plant in photosynthesis or chlorophyll production making it much greener and healthier. It also makes the color of your hibiscus flower more vibrant and brighter. You should always consider to apply it as foliar spray rather than adding it to the soil, as magnesium can easily be trapped along with other elements in the soil. And also there is always a competition between the magnesium and calcium intake in your soil. Maybe I will talk about this in a separate video. You need to also apply micronutrients in a very low dose once in a month again as foliar spray depending on the requirement or deficiency in your plant. Remember that the best time for applying your fertilizer in the plant is during the morning time before 9 or 10 am. One last thing I should mention here about this, this is not a fertilizer, it is called mycorrhiza. As the hibiscus plant doesn't like phosphorus much, it is an ideal case for applying mycorrhiza in your soil. Because mycorrhiza doesn't work properly if your soil has too much phosphorus in it. Mycorrhiza is a mutual symbiotic association between a fungus and your plant. And it is very good for plant's root system and it can significantly increase the fertilizer intake in your plant. But that's a separate topic of discussion. I'll soon make a separate video about this. But remember that this is completely optional. If you have it, then you can apply it in your soil once or twice in a year maximum. About one spoonful is sufficient for a potted plant. So there you go all about providing the perfect fertilizer for your hibiscus plant that no one has told you before. Try going beautiful hibiscus in your garden, maintain the fertilizer regularly which I recommend it. And also try to keep the paste and fungus away from your plant. A healthy plant should look like this. If you find the video useful then like, share and comment and also don't forget to subscribe my channel.
थैंक यू सो मच फॉर वॉचिंग एंड सी यू नेक्स्ट टाइम इन ए ब्रांड न्यू एपिसोड एट गो एंड मोर